Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's aquafaba. What? You've never heard of aquafaba? Well, to be honest, up until recently, neither had I. Now I love food. I mean, who doesn't, right? But in particular, I love finding out about food. So when I heard of a vegan grapevine that there was a cooking waste byproduct, something that would normally get thrown away, that could be used as an egg replacement, I was completely blown away. If not, a little skeptical. So what exactly is aqua faba? Well, let's break down the words first of all. The first part of the word, aqua, means water, and faba refers to beans or legumes. So to roughly translate it means the water from beans. To be more specific, it's the water byproduct that you have when you're cooking beans. So you cook the beans down, and you straight up the water. That's aquafaba, the water that you cook the beans in. So today what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a goal at making some aquafaba. This is, this is going to be the first of maybe a two or three part series looking at aquafaba versus eggs. It sounds like a superhero fight now. Um, aquafaba v eggs. So the, today in this first lesson, I'm going to show you how to make aquafaba and then some, in the videos that will follow I'll show you how we can use aquafaba or if it can be a genuine egg replacement. First of all let's remind ourselves of some of the functions of eggs. Eggs aerate so we can use them as we beat them to add air into a mixture like we're making meringues. Let's see if aquafaba can do that. Then eggs can be used as a glue. We're making things like um, our chicken goujons to help the crumbs stick to the outside. That's called enrolling. Let's see if aquafaba can do that. Eggs are also used to bind. So when you're making something like a burger, you know, when to fall apart inside when you're frying it or baking it or grilling it, you use eggs and it acts as a, as, a, as a glue inside the mixture to bind things together. Let's see if aquafaba can do that as well. Also, we use it in cakes. A similar kind of thing, but cakes, but in cakes and also in some breads, eggs also act as a type of leaven. Help it raise a little bit. Let's see if aquafaba can do that. So aquafaba's got quite some big boots to fill in terms of its functionality compared with eggs. First step, let's make some aquafaba. Now the process for making aquafaba really couldn't be easier. Step one, take one cup full of dried chickpeas and leave them to soak overnight. Once soaked, the beans increase to three times their original size. Step two, drain off any of the original water. Rinse the chickpeas, then place in a pan, cover with about an inch of water above the level of the chickpeas, and cook for roughly 15 minutes or until the chickpeas are soft. Step three, strain off the water, place them the water back in a pan and heat for a further 15 minutes to reduce down and thicken the liquid. You should see the mixture thicken and become viscous in consistency. Step four, allow to cool and then, ta-da, you have aquafaba. And there we have it, aquafaba. In our next video, we're going to figure out exactly if it works. I'm a little bit skeptical, but we'll see. You can now follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Go on, press that sub button right now. Thanks for joining us. My name is Mr. Lionbird, but you can call me Sir. A thing we know.